Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera where I'm making my se second video today from Hinokicho Park and try to get this uh, video done before the rain starts coming down. Uh, we've had uh, a lot of rain this year in Japan. Uh, we had a pretty rainy, rainy season in June and then rainy season came back in July, it came back a little bit in August and it's come back again in September. So. Uh, too much rain this year. Uh, I suppose those people living in California or other places would kind of uh, enjoy to have the kind of rain we've had. Maybe or maybe not. I'm not a big fan of rainy weather myself. I'd prefer to live in a, a more arid place, but you know, what can you do? Anyway, the uh, subject of my second video today is going to be a Yashica camera. I'm a big fan of Yashica cameras. I kind of got into uh, the camera business with a Yashica camera and I, I'm a big fan of them and I've had any number of them over the years. Uh, this is one of the more interesting and better of the or best of the Yashica cameras. This particular one is the Yashica YE. For those of you who are new to my channel, I sell vintage Japanese cameras in my online store japanvintagecamera.com. I have an Etsy store which is also called Japan Vintage Camera. So if you'd like to buy this Yashica or another vintage Japanese camera, please visit one of my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So, uh, the Ashika Camera Company has kind of a long history. Uh, before they began manufacturing cameras, they were a maker of uh, medical optical equipment, a lot like Olympus used to be. And in those days, uh, the, com the company was known as the Yashima Optical Company. In the 1950s, mid-1950s, with their uh, uh, twin lens reflex cameras, uh, they changed the name from Yashima to Yashika and uh, business exploded from there. In the 1950s and early 60s, Yashika was the world's number one producer of TLR or twin lens reflex cameras and they moved on into uh, the rangefinder photography market and producing the Electro series which is probably uh, one of the most popular uh, 35 millimeter rangefinder cameras of all time. During their great growth in the 1950s, uh, fueled mainly by the, their dominance in the TLR market, Yashica bought out another camera company, which was known as the Nika Company. Uh, some of the Nika models were rebadged Yashica and sold as Yashica cameras. And the Yashica YE, you can see it says Yashica YE on the top. Uh, the year before uh, Yashica acquired the company, this was uh, known as a Nika model 33 camera and 1958 Yashica bought uh, Nika and all these cameras were uh, renamed. Uh, the Yashica YE is the most common version of the early Nika cameras. There was another version uh, the Yashica YF which was a more advanced something like what you would say an M version of a Japanese copy of a Leica camera the kind which has a, a film back which opens a lot like a Leica. Uh, M model. Uh, this camera, of course, uh, is a copy of the earlier screw mount mo models, and it is quite an excellent copy. And having owned a few of the earlier Leica cameras myself, uh, I can say that this camera is every bit as good as, say, uh, something like a, a 3C, uh, or, let's see, uh, I guess 3C, 3F. The only one is, is like a screw mount camera I have not had yet is the 3G. That's kind of on my wish list. So. Hopefully I'll get a chance to pick up one of those and see how it compares with the better uh, Japanese screw mount uh, rangefinder cameras. Uh, the Ashika YE is an extremely well made, beautifully finished camera. It's really wonderful. Uh, the leatherette is really nice, much better quality than you find on the Leica cameras at the time. Uh, the quality of the metal uh, and the plating is very good. Uh, this is largely due to the climate in Japan, which is kind of extreme. Uh, we have uh, Arctic cold to um, the north of us in Hokkaido all the way down to uh, tropical weather in the southern islands like uh, uh, let's see, Okinawa and most of the country at least in the middle part has four distinct seasons with very hot and humid summers and cold and dry winters and such environments are not very good for metallic objects or precision metallic objects like a camera. So. Uh, cameras sold here in this market have to be especially resistant to the climate. And uh, this is an example of uh, how good a job they did in the 1950s. 
Uh, the controls, features, and functions on this camera are very much like an earlier Leica. Uh, on the top here, you have a winding or rewinding knob. There is no lever. Uh, here we have a shoe for mounting your flash. And we have a combination of shutter speed dials. We have a high speed dial on the top and a slow speed dial on the front, which on this camera works beautifully well. Over here we have the release button, which you press to release the winding mechanism to allow you to rewind the film. And here we have the shutter button. And like some of the earlier cameras and Japanese cameras, uh, this one doesn't accept a standard cable release. You have to use kind of a thread in adapter uh, to use it. Uh, uh, cable release on this camera. Uh, Yashica offered these as an option. You can sometimes find them on eBay and other places. They're a little bit hard to find, uh, but for myself, I, I don't normally use these cameras with the cable release. Uh, if I'm going to be shooting uh, something which requires a cable release on a tripod, I'll probably be shooting a, a medium or large format camera for a 35 millimeter camera. I don't really bother. Sometimes I do. If I've got something like a uh, an electronic camera like say a Nikon FE or a Pentax LX and I want to take some like really long exposures the tripod is kind of a necessity on those and yeah but uh, uh, not so important on this. Uh, here we have a film rewind lever which is kind of an improvement over the Leica cameras which have a winding knob and here we have a simple mechanical film counting dial located on the top which you have to reset by turning it manually after you load the film. On the back here, we have a kind of a double uh, system here, double viewfinder system. One is for the viewfinder itself, and it offers a pretty large and exact view of the 50 millimeter uh, focusing, I guess, uh, uh, field of view. And next to that, we have the uh, rangefinder focusing window, which is magnified to allow you to, uh, I guess, focus more uh, carefully and critically. On the wider angle lens, it's not so necessary, but if you're using one of the faster lenses, like the Ashika F1.8 lens, uh, you have to be a little bit more critical with the focus. Uh, this camera is designed around the 50 millimeter lens. If you're going to use wider lenses or telephoto lenses, you'll need to use an accessory finder. But uh, uh, Yashica kind of set this uh, uh, shoe kind of as close to the center as they could uh, to give you a good, accurate uh, a place to put your accessory viewfinder. Uh, on the back here we have a sink socket for attaching your flash. And let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom here. We have a quarter inch tripod socket on this side and we have the lever which you use to uh, remove the bottom cover for loading the film. On the front of the camera we have the viewfinder window and we have the rangefinder windows. And uh, kind of a sim simple system, very Leica-like. We have an adjustment screw here, which you can remove to adjust the uh, uh, the uh, infinity adjustment on the rangefinder. For making the uh, vertical adjustments, you have to, of course, remove uh, the rangefinder bezel around this side, and you have to turn the lens on the inside one way or the other to adjust for the vertical adjustment. Uh, loading the film in one of these cameras is the tricky part for a lot of people, especially uh, people who are new to film photography. Uh, there's kind of a special technique required. If you're acquiring one of these cameras and you're going to shoot with it, the first thing you have to make sure that you have is the take-up spool. Uh, often I come across these cameras which uh, don't have the take-up spool. And I will not buy one of these cameras if it doesn't have the take-up spool unless it's a really good deal because these spools for a cheap one runs about $80 or so. And original ones which are designed to go with a particular camera can be much more expensive than that. The take-up spool just kind of slides on like so. When you are loading one of these cameras you have to kind of look at this little guide on the back here and you can kind of see we have a picture of a film canister and a take-up spool. And when you are loading the film in one of these cameras, you have to trim the film leader in order to load it and make it fit up behind, uh, between the pressure plate and uh, the opening for behind the shutter. Uh, they used to make, and they still make, you can find them on eBay and Amazon, kind of a thing which you clamp on the film and just simply cut with a, a knife really quickly. Uh, for myself, uh, if I'm shooting one of these cameras, I will just use a pair of scissors. I count the number of... Uh, film holes which make up what it says 10 centimeters here or 4 inches and normally uh, I can't recall the number for it right now because I haven't actually done one of these in a while 
but I would just simply count up and then using a pair of scissors from like a Swiss Army knife kind of cut the film in this shape. And then you you have your film canister on one side and your take-up spool. You feed the end into the take-up spool and make sure that you have the film canister pointed the right way. And then simply, it's a little bit difficult to kind of slide them in together and push the film down in the back and get it all the way in and then locked into place. And then uh, once you do have it set, I, I kind of wind the film a couple of times. And to make sure that I have the film loaded properly, I look at the winding dial. I, I turn it so it's tight. And when I wind the shutter like this, I should see the rewind dial move. And that way I know that I've got the film wounded properly. It's kind of a complicated way to, to load film in the camera, but back in the days when Leica was first invented, it was, you know, was the first 35 millimeter camera and the 35 millimeter film wasn't designed for handheld cameras. It was designed for movie projectors. So uh, Leica and the copies of the Leica cameras never really got around this uh, system, but you needed it in order to get between the film pressure plate and the camera body. Uh, the lenses on these cameras, this camera has the standard uh, uh, Yashikor 50 millimeter uh, f2.8 lens and this is a really excellent lens and very well made uh, compared to some of the other lenses which I see in Japanese rangefinder cameras. For example the Canon 50 millimeter f2.8 lens is uh, incredibly prone to haze and I've never seen one which doesn't have at least some haze on the rear element and the haze eight times out of ten it cannot be removed it's usually permanent. Uh, the Ashka glass is a very high quality, or should I say Nika glass, is very high quality and doesn't suffer from the haze or deterioration problems. And also the coating on the front lens is harder and it's not as easily scratched as it is on some other cameras. Uh, Yashika and Nika and other companies uh, kind of designed their cameras for, I guess, hard use while other companies did not. So uh, some of the other lenses are quite fragile when it comes to the coating and uh, the hardness of the glass and quite easy to scratch or put cleaning marks on it whereas the glass in these is, is very very high quality. Uh, this particular example is quite nice. I was really happy to get this camera because it was such an, in such excellent condition. The lens is very beautiful, the shutter curtains are nice and clean, the leatherette is perfect. Uh, it's just a really wonderful camera and very smooth. And uh, I happened to find an original lens cap for it. When I bought the camera, it didn't have the lens cap. And I was sorting through my uh, assorted boxes of spare parts. This one popped up and I was quite lucky to find it fits right on there. So anyway, uh, that's it for my review of the Yashica YE rangefinder camera. I hope to have this thing available uh, later tonight, uh, listed for sale in my stores. Uh, so if you're interested in purchasing, uh, please stop on by and check it out. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.